welcome Talia Riley out to the podcast today. Talia Riley is a wife to TJ and a mother of four. She coaches mothers who struggle with body image and self-control around food. She has personally gained and lost 80 pounds five times and five different, at five different times in her life and um, has is grateful for the tools that she's learned to help her learn how to fly. So Talia, yes, we want to welcome you today and we're so gl glad you're able to be on the podcast, especially, you know, a lot of people start thinking about at this time of Not year. Not a lot, everybody. <laughs> about more they start focusing on their bodies and looking at that new year's resolution yeah right? and It'll usually lasts a couple of days well but fortunately though you have created tools um that because of your own personal struggles it looks like that you struggled five times you've lost 80 80 pounds so can you kind of tell us a little bit about you and your story and how you got to this point? Absolutely. First, I want to thank you both. I am honored to be here. There are so many amazing people that talk about you guys and everything you put on with your events. And I, um, I just love you. So I'm so grateful. I, this is really dear to my heart because my grandpa died at um, over 400 and something pounds from a heart attack before he even turned wow. 50. And there was a lot of addiction. They had like 13 siblings all together on that side. And there was just a lot of addiction issues. And I found myself as a young girl um, kind of feeling out of control. And I just I turned to food because that was easy for me. And that didn't feel bad or, <laughs> you know, and, and it kind of just led through my life. And it was, it was really painful and hard for me. And so um, when I thought I had mastered it and lost <clears throat> almost my first 80 pounds in high school and had some amazing results and, and thought work, I realized I still hadn't changed the thoughts and beliefs around the food and the way I felt inside, even though my whole body had changed in my image, I realized I still suffered from not feeling good enough and feeling broken inside. And so I love to help teach the tools to really get deep to be able to help mothers that are struggling like like I have been over the years so that they can help their families and help themselves to thrive. So that's kind of where it started. I, I don't know what else you want to hear. I, I lost the weight and then it would happen again. And it's just, I mean, there's some really cool stories around that painful part of, of gaining that weight back and that being my addiction, my go-to. That, that was, it still is my comfort. So how old were you when you... So you felt that you were quite heavy in high school, and that's when you first lost, yes. did the, the diet or yeah. whatever you did. And, and so how so old I, were you then? Were you like a junior, a senior in high I school? I was actually a freshman, and I, um, I just would come home and eat. I started, and then I started high school, and all my friends were like cheerleaders, and I couldn't find out what I wanted to do, and I got really depressed. And I would come home every night, and um, I would just eat. My best friend was like my diet soda and my bag of chips and I would numb out and I got to an ultimate painful high and I remembered that there was a gal in my neighborhood at the time that was as heavy as I was and had lost this weight. She was a senior and I could see this glow about her and I could see how amazing she was thriving and as this little sophomore I got the courage to ask her like tell me your secrets. And I just trusted her as this trusted source because I could see the shift in her. And she told me like three things. And what it was is she just said, I just ate more fruits and vegetables. I ate less sugar and flour, tried to drink more water, and I exercised every day. I did something for exercise. But she had lost like 70 pounds. And so I thought, well, if she can do it, I can do it. And that's one of the first tools I love to teach is about our mindset and our thoughts. Because from that day on, I was like, I can do it. And then I through that summer. So yeah, you you talk about these, you talk about these three pillars, and that's is that what you're saying is one of her first the first pillars right there is. Yeah, that's that's one of the pillars I like to teach. So. There's like for the for the acronym FLY is first having those positive thoughts and and how we can change that and become that person. And for me, it I didn't realize at the time that came pretty easy because I she was like me. 
I had seen her before and then I saw the shift in her and could feel that that could be me. And so I teach people about how to transform those thoughts mentally, especially going into this new year in January, having really good success so it doesn't last a couple weeks or a couple days, as you said, right? Because we get excited and then we want to blow through them and they don't last. And so these are how we can train our brain, how we can help them last and be permanent and become who we are. So I, I, it was an amazing gift to be able to do, to have those thoughts and entering into that junior year, 76 pounds lighter and having So did you do it over the summer or you just kind of somewhere in between your sophomore year and junior year? So to be really honest, I don't share this a lot, but I got so depressed in high school and I, halfway through there, I found a Christian based kind of, um, a private school and my parents were able to afford to put me in this private school and it started to shift my thoughts about not being stuck in that high school with that comparison. I started to think different and during those four months that I was in this kind of a private school halfway through my sophomore year is when I got the courage to ask her. So probably like April all the way through the summer, the weight just came yeah. off by thinking those things and doing those skills that I was saying second one in fly is is loving myself um my, exactly how i was it was okay that i was this heavy and over a size 20 and i even had this unibrow that was like forming together it was, it was hideous i won't show you the pictures but like i i plugged my eyebrows and i i lost the weight and i still felt broken at the beginning but i had changed as a person and it was because i thought i love myself as i am now and putting the, the why in fly is you. You put yourself first. You be the change you want to see. So first, positive thoughts. Second, loving yourself as you are. And then that third one for me was, was you and why. You put yourself first if you want to be the change that you want to see. Right? Have you guys, on, in all aspects of our life, right? So you talk a lot about, you know, a lot of times people focus on that it's just the food, the food, the food, which is a big part of it. If we're not eating the proper foods, then we're not going to get healthy. But most of it, it sounds like, from what you have found, that it's the emotional part that we really have to focus on. Because it's the emotional part that gets us. And it looks like, you know, you probably struggled with that too, with it taking five times to go through yeah, that. Yeah, so kind of explain what happened like afterwards. Like, did you go off to college and then gain weight back again? And then you got married and gained, I mean, yeah, kind of, so, what was the sequence in that? So I met my husband and from then on I had the thought. So going into high school, I had no dating before. I didn't go on dates. I never got asked. I plucked the eyebrow, I highlighted my hair and I lost 76 pounds. And my secret was to just jog every day because I didn't have a gym pass. I would just run every day. So for me, the first day of school, I went and put on a pair of tennis shoes and just started running the track. And when I ran the track, I just started running and I could see that there were soccer players and there was, you know, track girls there. And all of a sudden someone motioned me over and it was the coach. And he said to me, hey, are you going to try out? Are you new here? And I said, uh, I never even had thought about doing a sport because I was so heavy. And I, I thought, yeah, sure. And so I tried out and I made the soccer team and I made the track team and I was nominated for junior prom queen and my whole world had changed. And I remember thinking, oh, people think different of you when you're thin. People treat you different. That was my whole thought pattern. And so I that's tried a, to... That's, a, that's the truth, especially in high school. Right. And it, But it was kind of this fake, like, all I, I felt like a wannabe. I always talk about the Clueless movie because it came out and I just was this dorky girl who just wanted to fit in. And and the truth was I tried to keep thin and run and work out, even though I didn't feel really good inside, I still felt like people treated me different thin. So I kept the weight off for a long time. I met my husband and for years. And then a few years after we got married, I started to try to have a baby and I couldn't get pregnant. And I finally got pregnant after all these years and um, it was devastating because I had a tubular pregnancy and I lost twins when I was working and all of a sudden all of those emotions of being broken and not enough and all of that came rushing back to me from my life right and it was painful and I just didn't think I could have children and it took us almost six years 
And when I finally got pregnant, something switched in my mind that if I wanted to keep a child, then I would do what I knew best, and that was to, to eat. I was going to feed him, or I was going to feed this baby, and I was going to, you know, it was just a stupid thought, but I just quickly gained back 84 pounds during the pregnancy. That was the second time. <laughs> and so then you had that continual cycle that you had with the rest of the kids, or just like... Right. Um, and so you could see like, these were like emotional triggers that, that set you off onto that path. And so what have you found? Like, how can we help ourselves? What do you think is the first defense you can come up with of being, so you're not emotionally triggered when something happens? Oh, there's so many things, but oftentimes having the goal in mind of what you want, we have that vision board for the new year. But even that question, getting deep enough to have your why. Is it like, oh, I just want to fit into a pair of pants or, oh, I want to feel better. I mean, there's so many of us right now struggling with mental health and emotional and physical and all of those things. If your why is big enough and you have something that you're focusing on and looking at, there's no way for you to want to fall away from that. So when the big piece of cake shows up or the things that you used to be drawn to, those goals and that, the, the way you think about it, you, it it's not the same. You, do you, have you ever had that happen? It feels different. Do I want to have this or do I want to have this to give me the energy and to give me the momentum? And so getting deep on your, on your whys. I mean, for me, for a long time, I was like, I got to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to do this the new year. But when I would get deep on my goals and then figure out like why I really wanted it, maybe you want to play with your kids more or you want to be more active as a couple and, you know, do all these amazing things. When you know what that is and you have that vision in your mind or set out or on the fridge, it makes it easier to stay, um, to stay present with your goals. Do you guys find that? I have personally. So one thing I, th I also think about is that a lot of times we'll say, I need to have like support from other people. And it does, it is great when like my husband says, Hey, I want to get on track with this. Do you want to do it with me? You know, it's a lot easier to do with somebody, right? And she usually does it better than I do. But really what it comes <laughs> you got her started. to is that you have to make that choice in the, before that, that you're going to do it that it's not going to be determined if somebody else is there supporting you because though you cannot make your, your decision on somebody else. It has to all come from within you. And that's why I love that part about with your fly acronym that it starts with you because if everybody else can waver, but what are you going to do? Absolutely. And, so and I, I think that is so important to focus on. Well, thank you. And I find the same thing. I love it when I agree with the accountability. Just knowing that you have friends in a, in a group or you have a friend that you can text and report to, or I love, I've loved having mentors that can help guide me and people that are on my team, you know, because when you see your husband get up and he's putting on his gym shoes and he's eating salads and he's eating healthy, you're like, all right, I, I want to do this, but you're right. Having your why of why that, why that would fill you up and looking at it as an opportunity for self-care. When you fill up your own bucket and your own cup, it's like overflowing. So when your husband and your kids and everybody want to come and take from it, it's so overflowing that you have plenty to share. When we're depleting ourselves emotionally, physically, spiritually with good foods, and I've done this a lot throughout my life. I'm a pro <laughs> this, where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to eat this because it's going to make me feel good. But then it depletes me and I don't have the energy to show up as the awesome wife and mom and, and person and, and mentor and teacher and coach that I want to be. You know, do you agree? <laughs> I, I totally do. I love having a companion or a partner to get me um, moving for sure. Yes, and I agree. It is nice to have that. But what happens if your companion doesn't um, have the same goals that you have? Then it, it, it's kind of harder. And so it really, it does start with you. And the, I don't think people realize how, well, we do realize as we go along, but the emotional component of our health is way more important to focus on than even the food that we eat because we can eat 
healthy food for a short amount of time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden those emotions kick back in. And all of a sudden we're starting on that cycle of again of uh, because we didn't address those underlining issues of the emotional help help through it. Oh, exactly. And it's funny how they say in marriages and sometimes like my husband will be on one side doing amazing and then I'm struggling and then, you know, I'll be doing really good. And I totally hear you on that. But just being able to have, you know, yourself in alignment with what you want, because there's lots of times when like he doesn't want to do that right now. And that's okay. Like this isn't about me. This is a, about him. This is about me. I actually remember because I didn't know how to lose the next 84 pounds. I came to him about three months after my pregnancy and I said, hey, I'm gonna run a marathon. And he looked at me and he's like, honey, what do you mean you're gonna run a marathon? And he calls himself the realist, right? Like, okay, you can't just run a marathon. You had a baby, you're 84 pounds. Like, and he always says throughout the years, he's like, I always loved you. You always had such a beautiful face and you were so outgoing and so sweet. And, and that didn't matter because he'd see pictures of me and be like, whoa, you were like that. <laughs> like he didn't remember me that way until he saw the before and afters, but I said, yeah, I'm running a marathon. And I remember the day, and he gets mad at me for sharing this story, but I, I still love him, so I have to share. He just looked at me and he's like, honey, I don't, you're 5'2", like, you don't have a marathon running body, like, uh, let's just try something different. And I remember, I thought, oh, it's, it's on, you know, it, it is, <laughs> I am doing this. And so as soon as I had gotten back to a space after the baby, I started running I went out every morning and I started to run. And I remember the first three houses, I thought, oh, I'm going to die. I mean, literally. And then I ran a block. <laughs> the first day I was dying. And I didn't even want to tell him that, that I was dying that bad. And then I ran my first block. And then I ran like around the houses more. And I remember my son would nap and I would run to the bottom of the street and then the top of the street and do it back and then check on him while he would sleep and do it again and again. And eventually I remember running that first five miles and then the first 10 miles and then the first and I got so close to that finish line because my husband's like whoa she's like doing this and no one wanted to do it with me and I just said hey I signed up for the St. George Marathon it's two weeks after our son's birthday a year after he was born and um we I want you to come down with me and he's like she's serious about this thing you know and anyway I ended up running the marathon and as I crossed the finish line, he looked at me and he said, he cried, he had a little tear come down. He's like, my gosh, you know, you did it. And after running that marathon, crossing the finish line, I was, I think, 79 pounds down. So I had about five pounds from my goal weight. And that just came from doing the goal, doing the routine, being consistent, knowing what I wanted, like you said, no matter what got in the way. He didn't support me, but boy, he, um, he, he really, he really knew that I meant what I said after that. And it was really special to have him look in my eyes and say, I'm so proud of you. And you did it. I didn't think you could do it and you did it. <laughs> so it was really cool. But anyway. So that's, that is the hard thing, especially, I mean, guys just get fat and lazy, right? But <laughs> with women, with women. It's, it's really hard because they have, especially if they're having kids, it's really hard. And some people gain lots of weight with kids and others don't gain that much. But um, And sometimes it's self-induced weight gain, but other times it's just how their bodies are. So is that kind of what happens each time you had a kid? You would kind of go back up high and then have to drop it back down and go back up yeah. high? Is that, is that kind yeah, of and so having, the weight loss issues? I haven't shared this with many people, but I, I had a total of 10 pregnancies. Don't remember, um, it's just us two, it's okay. Oh, okay, good. I, I had a total of 10 pregnancies. No one else is listening. No one else. So 10 oh, wow. pregnancies all together, and as a woman, when you would like keep miscarrying babies, so I ended up having my son, and he was a great pregnancy, and then had three miscarriages after, and then I had my daughter, and so I don't know, looking back, I believe it was this whole thought process. Oh, it worked before. When I ate and I fed my baby and then he survived. So somehow I'm like, I better do it again. It was the dumbest thing. And we tell our brains something and they believe it. And at the time I didn't realize how powerful my brain, you know, our brains are. And so now that I coach on this and I teach about the brain, I, I thought I self-sabotage, but it was such a great learning lesson, right? <laughs> so yes, I did it again with her. And 
honestly, we had two children and I thought I was done with kids. We were so blessed to have them. And that wasn't the plan for me. Heavenly Father sent children in every decade, in my 20s, in my 30s, in my 40s, seven years apart. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it was my husband's an only child. So he was just like, oh my gosh, like what's happening? I'm 43 and we got pregnant on our 20 year anniversary. And it was the best gift in the world, but it big, no, we had no choice in the timing of it, you know? So um, that's how it happened was every child. So how long have you been on, how long have you been on this time where you've been down to your weight that you want to be at? How, how long has it been for that? So we went on our 20 year anniversary and I always felt like maybe there was one more baby. But when she came in my late 30s at 33, almost 34, I thought she was our surprise baby. And, and um, she actually came at a time when my husband was in a really hard space. He fell off almost an 18 foot ladder at work and had, couldn't walk. And we had a small farm with animals that we were trying to, to run with cows and chickens. He couldn't even lift the bale of hay. And my husband is like a go-getter. And, and then I started getting sick because I was doing the farm and with kids. And then I found out I was pregnant totally out of the blue after seven years. And so he was blown away at that time. And she was another little gift at that time. And that's what kind of led me onto this whole journey of, of health. I've done a lot with energy. And that's why I love how you teach about the Be Healthy is, you know, I learned to be a foot zone practitioner. I learned all these cool things because the baby came out sick because I had overeaten again. She was sick, so she taught me so many things and my husband was in so much pain. And so it, um, that was our surprise. So when she came in our forties, I mean, we were blown away. And you asked me that question. Um, I had her when I turned 40. I'm, I'm going to be 44 next year. So 43 now and a half. Right. <laughs> and I, I still kind of hang on to like 20 pounds, to be honest. I, that's why sometimes I'm like, Oh, I'll talk to people and I'll think I'm not at my perfect spot. And I'll always have mothers say to me, I don't want someone perfect. I want somebody that knows what the struggle is, that knows that they can overeat and then get back and how to do this. So it's been um, it's been three years, three and a half years. Well, that it's I've harder to relate to a Barbie, right? Yes, I mean we all we want to relate. It really relate is. To... I mean, it's it's harder to relate. Yeah. So sometimes you know it's funny we get in our brains. I'm like I'm a hypocrite because I'm not down exactly where I've been before what I do, but I feel really happy and that's that piece of. I love myself how I am now. I'm a mom with four kids with almost a 19 year old and a three year old. And I'm just doing the best I can. And I want to relate to moms in all areas of their life that are struggling emotionally and physically. And they don't know where to go because they're drowning. And so that's why I'm so passionate to help those women that were like me. So Talia, where, um, you have some, you have a website, where is it people can find you at? Yeah. So and it's we'll at, talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. It's at a, a www.talia Riley. And, um, I, I have a podcast on there that I do and it's freedom flight ignite with Talia Riley. And I give some really good tips to help you move forward. Um, I have like a questionnaire download on my website and I have a really cool course called Ignite Your Light that's I'm it's launching in January and I still have uh, five spots left for that. So I'm really excited about it. So do you have any promotions at all for our audience? Yes, do I do share? because you guys are amazing. I'm going to offer a code that's a 50% off. So it's Ignite 50 and um it's half off what it would normally be. So it's eight weeks, like one-on-one, -on -one, or you can do the group mentoring if you prefer. And then I have a course that goes along with it so that you can keep on track and have those goals being consistent for you. So this isn't just a quick couple days. You've got support for the next few months into the new year with a group of people that you can relate to. And um, normally my course is like $11.97, but half off it's only $5.97 for this group mentoring or one-on-ones that I'm doing. And the course is all included with that. So I'm doing it because I'm so honored to be on your podcast today. So when does this course start? 
you know what? You can get access to it and make an awesome Christmas present, but I can get the course out to you before so you can start reviewing it. You can start it in January and we can, we're going to start up the calls in January. So it'll be amazing. And it's something you can move through on your own too, uh, if they wanted, but having that support through the beginning of the year is always that extra push to like we were talking about motivation, right? Well, and I, like, I really feel that when you do like these type of courses, you get the emotional because you don't know what the emotional things are going to come up that are going to come up with you throughout the course. Also, you get that accountability to where you're with the course and also to where you had to invest some money, some time, and for you, then you get a lot better results too. And and then you just have somebody there that's helping you hold your hand as you go. And I think it's so great to have multiple parts of that course be part of it. Well, it's easier not to eat that candy bar if you know you're going to talk to somebody the next day about what you ate for dinner, right? <laughs> I mean, it's reality. Exactly. And having the tools, I think the biggest part of this course is literally being able to retrain your brain. I, I'm so grateful that I learned those tools. And now I don't have to gain 80 pounds anymore. The lucky number was, was five. <laughs> Four kids and in high school. We're good. No more We're not kids. going for six, huh? Oh, no, no, no. My <laughs> husband would die. So that was the lucky number. And it took that many times to get it. So now I really feel like that's where I can give the mindset tools that will literally change and transform. If, you, if people really dive into this, their brain will change. They, they won't have to do it five times like me. They could go in as their first New Year's goal forever. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be cool? The next year, they wouldn't have to have that goal again. <laughs> that goal's done. So they get to focus on something cool or like their business or their life or their whatever because they already have that one down. There's no question. So I love that. All right. Well, they could, people can find you on TaliaRiley.com and on Facebook and Instagram. Do you get on there? Like what is your handles on there? Transformation with Talia on Instagram and then on Facebook, it's just under Talia Riley. And um, and that would be awesome. And then just an email if they wanted to reach out that way, it's pretty easy. It's Talia at TaliaRiley.com. Okay, and then also I'll put in the notes of the Ignite 50, right? So people yeah. can take $50, 50% off the course, right? Yes. All right, Talia, well, thank you for joining us today. And um, it's a... You know, this is a really live struggle that a lot of us deal with, but if we know that there's tools out there to help us, then it could be just so much easier because it is a constant battle that we all struggle with every single day. So thank you for providing this and focusing on um, especially women that really struggle with just um, wanting to live their best life. Thank you. You guys are doing such amazing things. I'm seriously so honored and so grateful. So I, I just love you. So thanks for letting me be here and, and share my light and try to help moms. There's, there's, there is hope, I promise, from the girl that has done it again and again and been so lonely and so trapped, like feeling free and more free. And even when I get trapped again, now I know how to get out. Like I have the key, the magic key. And so I'm just grateful, super grateful. Thank you so much.